Yeah. I don't know what to ask. What do you want to know? I don't know. <laughs> we shared the cabin with Uncle Chris and Dot. Chris really was building the cabin. Uh, they shared expenses, but I think Chris did most of the work. They had six kids. We had six kids in my family, so there were 12 kids in that one cabin alone. Presumably, we all were supposed to do an hour of work in the morning before we could go play with our kid friends, picking up or chopping wood or something. And then once we were done with that, we could go off and play. And we built the raft in between our ca two cabins. Uh, up on the top of the hill. Which, looking back on it, I'm not quite sure why we did it, but we did. Um, and once the whole frame and the floorboards were on it, well, you remember, it was a pretty big raft. It was like 12 feet wide and, I don't know, 16, 20 feet long. It was a big raft. And, uh, and so then, to get it down to the lake was a real trick, so we drafted everybody we could find and tilted the thing up on its side and slid it down the hill into the water. Had to weigh like five, six hundred pounds. Yeah, and then, and I think there were maybe five barrels on each side, 50 gallon barrels for the flotation. And, um, and when he first built it, uh, for sure, we would sometimes put a motor on the back. He had a yeah, I little section where a motor could go. And I wonder if he didn't even have a steering wheel at one time hooked up to it. So he, he could, uh, he, yeah, I think he did. He had a little podium in the middle of the raft with the pulleys going back to the motor so he could steer it. I remember going out on it with, uh, with one of its first maiden voyages when they had invited all sorts of people and it had dessert on it. I think there were like, oh gosh, 12, 15 adults or so. And it was riding pretty low. And, uh, but we just putted along the shoreline and I had my fishing pole. And it's the biggest wall I ever caught was in front of beavers. Okay. Yeah. On that raft? Yeah, you know, probably four to five pound walleye. Huh. And, uh, oh yeah, everybody cheered, we kept it. Oh yeah, it was fun. Uh, John Everson and Morris, we, Morris and I were best friends for a long time. And then, uh, then we got to know John, he was a year older, and then Peter Quello moved up. So the four of us were all about the same age. And, um, you know, we just always hung out at the raft uh, during the day, when it, whenever the weather was okay. One, one time, uh, I think, Peter wasn't up at this time, but John and Morris and I went, took the boat somewhere uh, west of the channel, northwest of the channel, and had jungle hammocks and stuff and just slept out there. And um, the girls were mad at us because we didn't invite them along. So when we came back the next night and we were, <clears throat> uh, the girls decided to go into town, maybe to the drive-in for a movie without inviting us, that was their retaliation. So John and Mor Maury and I were down in, in mom and dad's boathouse playing cards. And when the girls came back, they came back to Tullickson's cabin next door. And pretty soon we could hear them laughing coming down to the shoreline and giggling a lot. Pretty soon we heard water that they were getting in the water. We figured that they were probably skinny dipping. So we got, you know, hustled up and got the best flashlights we could get and snuck down the shore um, to be as close to the raft as we could. And on the count of three, we all turned on our flashlights. And they were all on the raft naked. So <laughs> they screamed and jumped into the water and, uh, and not knowing what else to do, they started swimming towards shore. But of course, they 
and we had turned off our flashlights. And they didn't know where we were, but they were a little suspicious. But as they got into shore, they started to stand up, and then we turned on our flashlights again. And they all dropped down, except for my cousin Betty, Betty Price, who stood up and said, you boys, turn those lights off. And, and the other girls are trying to drag her down. It's like, Betty, get down. <laughs> so that was a funny time. Another time that uh, I think the four of us dragged a tent and some sleeping bags and some food back into um, <clears throat> back into the woods. We were trying to make our way to what was called the Big Meadow. We didn't quite make it all the way. Well, you know, as you go from beavers and you head straight, sort of straight away from the the road, yeah. and then after a long ways, it finally makes a turn, heads, like that, yeah. heads north, That's, yeah. like you're finally going to Tootie's cabin. Yeah. Well, right at that corner is where we camped. That's, yeah. that's as close as we got to the big meadow. Okay. It was sort of a meadow with like it is now with, with sumac and stuff, but we were tired, so we just quit there. Uh -huh. We were just, I don't even remember that we had packs. We were just dragging stuff loose, water and food and tent and sleeping bag and complaining the whole way. <clears throat> that night in the tent, the four of us were talking about, uh, gosh, I suppose we were seventh, eighth grade, I don't even know. And of course we were uh, talking about sex and trying to figure out how everything works <laughs> and, and, I, and Johnny being a year older than us had more information and Peter was the most naive of us all he had a, not a clue how stuff worked and so constantly he was saying really really I didn't know that my parents did that it was kind of the classic adolescent boy conversation on sex in the woods.